For more information on our podcast, visit huntandfool.com. Well, welcome back again. We're here with Jason Hairston, uh, myself, Jared Lyle, Garth Jensen, Austin Atkinson. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of education on base layers here. We're, again, we're at Kuyu headquarters in Dixon, California. Weather's a little nicer than it was in Montana. I bet. Yeah. So thank you for having us. Thank you for your Great making time. Great to have you here. And uh, I think today um, base layers are something that's super interesting to me because <clears throat> circle of safety, I sweat like a pig. Like I, no matter how good a shape I get sure. in, I, I, I am going to sweat like crazy. And so I've always struggled with base layers, wool versus synthetics. Sure hybrids, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to a little bit of education here, and hopefully you can tell me the right pick when I go to head out. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's more options today than we've ever ever had, um, you know, whether it's merino wool or synthetics or blends. Um, and I think um, a lot of times I look at people's comments or um, even companies that are producing these products and how they describe them. Um, it's created some confusion about, you know, what base layer does what and what's the purpose of that base layer? What are the advantages of that base layer? Let's say a merino wool base layer over a synthetic. Right. And, you know, as from a technical standpoint, they're opposites. And I think that's where some of the confusion comes in in understanding what the advantages are, what the expectations should be for the different choices. Um, and I think it, today it's, it's awesome for the customer because we have so many choices uh, from back, you know, Prior to launching Sitka, there was very hardly any choices as far as like what you wore as base layer was cotton. Right. Right. <laughs> cotton hunting camo t shirt. <laughs> it's comfortable for five minutes. Yeah, exactly. You're freezing when it gets wet. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, you know, looking at the t- really two basic options um, in merino wool and synthetic, I think, you know, looking at merino wool to start with, um, just understanding the principles of the fiber of merino wool. Uh, there's there's two different types of fibers. There's hydrophobic, which means phobia, hates water, right. which would be your synthetic. And wool is hydrophilic, loves water. And that's why they work really opposite of each other. Hmm. And there's advantages to both types of fibers. Um, you know, if people talk about, well, you can wear wool when it's wet because it keeps you warm. And it's true. And there's a reason for it. Not a lot of people understand it. Um, but because it's hydrophilic, it wants to absorb moisture. It pulls the moisture off your skin and actually into the fabric. Hmm. So it keeps your skin dry. Um, and that's having drier skin, obviously, will keep you warmer than being soaking wet up against your skin. But also, with a merino wool base layer next to your skin, um, there's an evaporative effect. So a synthetic wants to, you know hates water it will move if uh, performance knits you can actually move the the will move the moisture from next to your skin to the outside of the fabric and dry it dries very quickly um, merino wool because it wants to hold on to the moisture the way it the way it dries is through evaporation and that can come in a couple of different ways from your body heat and from the outside environment and that uh, evaporative effect does two things. In hot conditions, it cools your skin. In cold conditions, there's, it's been proven that it actually warms your skin. That evaporative effect creates heat. And that is really, you think about it, when, you, you know, when your wool product's wet in cold climate, you feel, it, you feel warmer in it. Right. You know, it performs yep. when it's wet. It's actually the evaporative aspect that creates heat. During that process is really what keeps you warm when it's wet. Where I think merino wool shines is in hot weather. And a lot of people think, why would you wear wool in hot weather? It'd be crazy. You're going to burn up in it. It's actually the best choice for merino wool is hot weather hunts, hmm. in my opinion, over synthetic. Because it's going to pull that moisture off your skin into the fiber. And when it evaporates, it's going to cool the surface of your skin. And, you, and, it, and it's, um, there's a performance advantage there over a synthetic, which is just going to dry fast. Um, and not cool the, uh, the temperature of skin. So it's, um, when you think about, you know, one thing to think about with merino wool and how that functions, right? But, but there's negatives because it's hydrophilic. Um, because it wants to hold moisture, it's going to dry really slow compared to synthetic. I don't know if you, how much time you guys have spent merino wool, but that's, they're wet a lot. You right. sweat a lot, yes. your shirt's going to stay wet. Yeah, I've um, noticed. When you go to bed at night, if you wear that shirt, a lot of times I'll wear the same shirt over and over again. Um, it can be you can wake up next morning, it's still damp, yep. right? Because it wants to hold on to moisture. And merino wool is not a moisture-wicking fabric. 
Um, I've seen information out there from, you know, in other marketing materials. It's, it's a, wo- a moisture wicking base layer. It's not. It's a moisture holding base layer, <laughs> right? Um, so because of that, there's a, the advantage, as I, ex- as I explained about heating and cooling the surface of your skin. The other advantage to merino wool, which, you know, I think a lot of hunters really appreciate, is the fact that it's antimicrobial by nature, meaning it, uh, a, a bacteria really are, can't um, live in a merino wool product, and, which causes the odor in synthetics. And the reason for that is the fiber of merino wool is made up of carotene protein. And carotene protein is a antimicrobial, um, is antimicrobial by nature. Hmm. Um, bacteria cannot grow next to a carotene protein um, molecule. So that's why you can wear a merino wool shirt day in and day out, and it'll never produce that stink that you get from a synthetic. It will, when it's wet, have a bit of an odor. Uh, you've probably experienced that. We're kind I of call cons- it the wet sheepdog. The wet yeah. sheepdog odor. Yeah. And that's because of where it comes from. Sure. You know, right. And if you're around a wet sheep, it smells like that, <laughs> right. right? And that that cannot be – I haven't found anybody that can remove that property from merino wool. But it's not the human stink odor, right? Right, right. And, um, and I think that's – you know, that advantage um, over synthetics for a lot of guys like it, right? It's antimicrobial that wears, wear the same shirt. Um, the other – you know – Holding moisture, um, the wet dog smell. If you don't, you don't care about it, or it could be considered negatives, or the fact that it doesn't hold, it doesn't create odor is a positive. Um, the other, the other um, kind of downside, in my pr- my perspective on on merino wool, is how the yarn is made. It's they take um, ultra fine merino fiber and they string it in, in long long tube strand, and then they twist it. So it's a twisted fiber. It's twisted tight. And that's how they make a merino wool yarn. Because it's twisted tight, it's pretty fragile. So it's not great against abrasion. We've all worn merino wool. We've probably all punched holes in it right, right. up against a hip belt or up against your belt or going through brush. So it's not a really durable fiber. Right. Um, it's going to be a lot more fragile. Obviously, you have to worry about moths eating holes through it in the wintertime. Um, and that's the, kind of the downside to... My perspective is, is durability and that it holds moisture and is going to be wet um, versus a modern synthetic, which, you know, if you put both those, you put a merino wool shirt, you put a synthetic fiber shirt in a, you know, washing machine and spin cycle it, like you can pull our base layers out and our synthetics are basically dry. You pull your wool out and it's still soaking wet, yep. right? Um, when you're looking at base layers, especially really high performance base layers, a couple things to think about. One is, um, does it have elastic? And the, the more expensive synthetic base layers will be made without elast- elastic. And elastic's put into synthetics um, to give recovery for when it stretches. So it stretches out, the elastic pulls it back to shape. Um, elastic's a terrible fiber to have in performance products. It's heavy, it holds moisture, and also wears out over time. Um, elastic, when it's stretched and recovered enough in a single time you're using it, will, won't recover the same it did from the day you put it on versus you know, three days later. So you get a saggier type of garment, holds moisture, um, and will keep it wet longer. So especially on a base layer next to your skin, you want to make sure you flip that label over and make sure there's no elastic in it. And there's not just Kuyu produces a base layer without elastic. There's others out there, but that's a super, super important thing to look for, hmm. um, that there's no elastic. And the other is understanding what they're putting on that product to keep it antimicrobial, which will keep the odor out of it. Um, there's some brands out there using, you know, ecstatic and some silver treatments that are pretty good. Um, there's other brands out there not using very, they call it antimicrobial treatment, but in two days you can't wear that shirt. <laughs> yeah. You smell like a homeless guy, <laughs> right? That's um, how I hunt usually. In yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we've been, wor- we worked with Tori to, to treat our synthetics when we were first, cause we introduced just with Marina World to begin with. And then wanting to get into synthetics, Tori, um, took the amazing prime flex yarn that makes up all our outerwear and they put it into a knit program for us. And... One of the one of the challenges we have is okay, how are we going to keep this from stinking? Um, Tory, being a a company that's based on chemistry and a bunch of different industries, they developed a treatment for 
the medical industry that was had this amazing properties of antimicrobial treatment. And so we tested it, putting it into our garments. And uh, for us, I can wear, like last year I wore, brought two base layer shirts on a 14-day backpack sheep hunt. At the end of the 14 days, I could pick up both and smell them, and it didn't smell like I'd even worn them. Um, so there are great treatments out there. You just need to make sure you understand. Those were both synthetics? Yes, yeah. both synthetics. Um, and so, that, you know, understand that and making sure that you, that, that product's going to stay reasonably odor-free over a period of time, uh, I think, is important. Because on a 14-day hunt, um, and you get a product that doesn't do that, and you only bring two base layers, um, they're going to smell you from a mile away. <laughs> and um, plus you're banished in yeah. camp from, from any sort of campfire <laughs> yeah, exactly. or, or st shared stove activities. Exactly. And uh, so for me on my choices, like when do I choose Merino? When do I choose a synthetic? Uh, if I'm backpack hunting, uh, in the North, like a Northern, you know, sheep hunt or any hunt that I'm going to Alaska with really wet conditions, I'm choosing a synthetic hundred percent of the time, um, for my base layer next to skin. Even in August. Yes. Yep. Um, because I like a product that dries really fast. And right. we're in wet climates. We're in wet conditions. We're in and out of product. And, you know, we're in a rain gear a lot. I want that base layer to be dry. Sure. Um, I sleep in my kit. You know, I bring a – for most of my hunts, I bring a 30-degree bag. And then use my layering system that I have with me to increase the temperature rating of my bag. So I'm sleeping my base layers. I want to go to bed with dry base layers. I want to wake up with dry base layers. Um, they're just more comfortable for me to use the synthetic for those trips. If I'm doing a desert hunt or a hot hunt, I'm choosing Merino because it cools my skin temperature. And I've noticed a significant difference. I can stay in, um, even in, in my layers in hot conditions using a, a, a Merino wool base layer next to my skin longer than if I have a synthetic in those hot conditions. That's amazing. Which is counterintuitive, right? Yeah, right? I was yeah. going to say that. You would have thought just the opposite. <laughs> right? That's true. I mean, I get that. Like, oh, it's hot. You should wear a synthetic cold wool. For Technically speaking, if you understand the principles of the two, it's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Totally yeah. opposite. Now, unlike a 14-day backpack sheep hunt where you're living out of your pack for two weeks, will you try to wash or treat any of that or soak it? Your base layers in a, in a creek or stream, or do you not even touch it that I way? I don't even have to. Don't have to. Don't even need to. I mean, um, the only time I'll soak a shirt if it's just freaking hot out, I'll soak my shirt and throw it back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, needing to wash or needing to refresh my stuff, I don't do it. Um, uh, because I'm, you know, because of the performance levels of our product. And so you're only taking basically on a, like a, a long sheep hunt like that, one set of base layers. I have a set that I'm wearing. And then I bring one extra shirt, and I'll bring two bottoms. And the only reason I bring an extra shirt that if we're out in super wet conditions, um, we get back to camp and everything's soaking, I want to put on a dry shirt to go to bed. Gotcha. Um, so and that's what I found. All that's all I need. Um, and then you know, just back to the base layer topic. There's there's other choices in between too. I mean, you, I think you brought it up. You know, kind of hybrids or or blends. Um, and you know. What should be, you know, how, what's your perspective? I think on that you brought up earlier in our conversation is um, there's truly understanding what the reason is behind the blend and what to expect on performance is important. You know, blend being some polyester in with a merino wool product and what that does. Uh, from a te technical aspect, um, it's kind of counterintuitive technically if you look at it, right? You're buying merino wool because right. it's a hydrophilic, fiber is going to hold moisture and get the evaporative cooling effect, right? You add synthetic into it, you're decreasing Merino wool's ability to do that and create that performance advantage, right? Most companies create blends for cost. One downside to Merino wool, especially seven and a half micron fiber is incredibly expensive compared to synthetic. And it's a market that fluctuates. You know, it's essentially a commodity. So, as the demand and growth for uh, in China for and the growth of the middle class wearing wool suits has become very the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's driven the demand for wool up, which has also increased the price. And so uh, companies wanting to, especially at sell through retail, wanted to have a merino wool product. It's almost, especially at seven dead micron, price them out of the market. So they add synthetic into their merino wool product to say that it's merino wool, but they're adding poly to save cost. Um, there's no performance, my technical opinion and understanding how the fibers work, there's no performance advantage that's actually decreasing performance of your renewable product. Um, the only, I guess the only advantage to adding in 
a poly into a marina wool would be it would increase durability but you're going to end up with a product that just kind of stays wet not as long as a 100 percent merino but then you then you lose the evaporative heating and cooling effects of merino wool um, so for me and what we build you know we're 100 percent synthetic or essentially 100 percent merino wool in our products we use a patented a uh, yarn called New Yarn, which does use a thin piece of nylon um, because it's not a twisted yarn, it's a pulled through yarn, which is, allows our product to perform a little bit better than everyone else's. From um, a durability point of view? A couple things. It has a higher, it has a more lofty um, yarn because it's not twisted tight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's twisted around a, a nylon core, um, which gives it a loftier yarn, which allows, allows it to be more comfortable. Because it's not twisted tight, you know the fibers sticking out, which are what you feel up against your skin. Um, it's more abrasion resistant because it's not twisted so tight. When some, something's rubbed up against it, it doesn't destroy that yarn as quickly, and um, it also absorbs water easier because it's loftier, and also evaporates it quicker, which uh, accentuates the evaporative cooling and heating effect on our products. Um, so those are kind of the, the advantages and disadvantages to, to marine wool and synthetics. And like, like we talked about, and like you guys learned, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. Right, for sure. Right? Now, a question I have, you mentioned trying to ver verify that you don't have elastic in your, mm -hmm. in your base layer. Um, is that identified as spandex primarily? Spandex, or? lycra, or elastic. Okay. Yep, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, spandex and lycra are just brand names for their elastic. I got you. All terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, in outerwear, you should look for it. And then, are those individual threads that are woven into the fabric to create that? Or yeah, is they it, we or is it's it, part of the weaving process. Yeah, right. And so, as the fabrics getting woven, there'll be uh, one of the yarns will be elastic within the gotcha. the range of or you know depending how much elastic they want to put into it on a percentage basis, the amount of elastic in, in replace of the yarn sure. will go into the weaving process. Okay, to create that recovery on stretch that's the one thing i've always noticed like when you throw on a shirt a kuyu shirt and you have it for five years basically five years down the road it's fitting the same way yep. as it did when you bought it versus you get into other other categories and you know other other outerwear or other base layers it just doesn't fit after two or three years that thing is just sagging it exactly. doesn't fit the same way yeah it, and that's through um you know washing and drying it mm -hmm. eventually dries that elastic out. And UV, elastic doesn't handle UV very well either. So under a lot of sunlight, it degrades the performance of elastic. And the other thing with elastic that we talked about is, um, you know, you wear a shirt with a lot of elastic or, or a pant with a lot of elastic. It becomes saggy until you wash it again. Um, and that always drives me nuts. Yeah. It doesn't fit the same. <laughs> Um, what about the lifespan of, of buying a merino wool set versus a synthetic? Mm -hmm. I mean, washing it, drying it. You, you do you do that in the regular cycles at home. Yep. And which one's going to last longer over time? Or gonna be synthetic's going to last lo a lot longer than a merino wool product um, because merino wool product um, is a lot um, f more fragile. It's not as durable. It's a natural fiber. Um, so it will break down sooner over time. I think the life cycle of a, a really good s synthetic is really the, its ability to be antimicrobial. Because once you get that stink in a synthetic, most, you can't get it out. It's not coming out. And as soon as it gets wet, it comes up and starts to smell and it gets worse over time. Um, so I think that really, for me, determines the length of time I can use a synthetic more than durability. Um, our synthetics um, will last up, I mean, forever. I mean, really, in my opinion. And... Um, but it's how long do they not have an odor? Because once they do, you can't, you, you got to get rid of them, and replace them. I know I've got a set that I, uh, skin and grizzly bears, and it yeah. seems like you have that grease and that grit and uh, that so blood all over you. And that's a pretty unique thing. <laughs> yeah. You could kind of set that aside. Oh, that's my bear hunting yep. base layer or shirt or jacket and just kind of leave it as that. That funk, I don't know you can get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad stuff. It is. Yeah. Lance and I've, uh, talked about that quite a bit the just the grease and once everything gets into the your clothes you you, I mean, you can't get it out um so yeah he has his own bear hunting kit as yeah. well for those <laughs> reasons um and then you know you think about synthetic and wool not just on base layers but mid layers right or a heavier weight product um which we have so we have next to skin and then we have like a, a 210 gram next layer like a zip tee hoodie um 
and what are the best choices between merino wool on on the heavier weight products versus um, synthetics and heavier weight products and I always look at warmth to weight ratios meaning for the weight of a product or a fabric or a fiber how much warmth is it going to provide because that's what that next layer is is there to right. do right right and synthetics way outperform merino wool in that category and they're going to give you a lot more warmth with a lot less weight especially if you can find that mid layer without any elastic hmm. um, in my opinion on on merino wool a base layer next to your skin is the only place you should have it in your system you're giving up a lot in weight and warmth with that mid layer especially those heavier weight merino wools once they're wet and they're because they're hydrophilic they hold moisture they hold a ton of moisture and they take forever to dry and um we get some guys who are just like i want merino wool for my base layers and mid layers and we sell a lot of it but from a truly technical perspective it's a merino wool is a terrible choice other than next to your skin. Huh. Yeah, a lot that, of people don't understand. When that 240 Peloton hoodie come out, I was just in love. Yeah. Man, that thing, I, I just, I always have it in my pack. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's a great product. Our 200 weight uh, Jersey Fleece um, Peloton uh, is amazing to me. I mean, it's so warm for how little it weighs. Yeah. And then we came out with a new 97, which is like a five ounce shirt. It's amazing how warm that keeps you for how little it weighs. Oh, I could. Last year when I, I got that 97, originally when I got it, I thought, well, the, the amount of warmth I'm going to get from this really yeah. isn't going to be a lot. I'm mean, just going to have how, how warm could I be in this lightweight shirt, right? It's like a camo every, skin. Oh, every, of every hunt insulation. after that. It was always there because it weighs basically nothing, yep. and the amount of warmth I got from that was yeah. just incredible. It's a, that shirt I, is the most amazing temperature body temperature regulator I've ever been in because you can wear it in a, such a wide range of, of yep. temperatures, and you're comfortable in it. Even though it kind of gets warm, you're not too hot in it. When it starts to get cold, it keeps you warmer longer than you think it should. Yep. Yeah, that's an amazing, amazing. It was uh, a, it fabric. was almost the difference between like how you were you know you just told us listen. Warm weather wool, yeah. Cold weather synthetic, yeah. Just flipped it on its edge. When I got that shirt, I was like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I know it's pretty amazing. It is that product is one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, that's you know truly that from a technical perspective, that's merino wool versus synthetic. And from a technical perspective, when you should use each. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying you can't use sure. merino wool on a northern hunt or a backpack hunt. It's still a fine choice, still a good choice, and we have a lot of customers that's what they choose. Right. But truly, from a technical perspective, um, merino wool for hot weather, synthetic for really cooler weather and, and extended hunts, in my opinion. And no elastic. Elastic's the enemy. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, that's awesome information. I know I learned. I, I Again, I had it totally backwards, too. So. Everyone does. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I did, too, until I started researching it. Right on. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Jason. We'll uh, we'll thank wrap you. it up this discussion on uh, base layers with that, and uh, we'll get into some other topics here shortly. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening today, and as always, give us a call at 435-865-1020 for more information. Also, follow us on Instagram at at built to hunt and subscribe to this podcast to hear more great content from our team at Hunt and Fool.